Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Hello and welcome to this video. This is problem set five. We're going to be continuing to look at log properties and we are trying to solve logarithmic equations. Now what you have to keep in mind to um, solve these equations I'm going to show you and I'm going to give you a shot at two problems here is to remember the logarithm of a product becomes an addition problem. The logarithm of a power like this example here and this example here becomes a product. You move the exponent in front and it becomes multiplication. Logarithm of a quotient looks like this. It splits up into a subtraction problem. All right, so if you can go back and forth using these properties, you can solve these equations. Now here's a couple to try. All right, take a moment on a piece of paper to try numbers 23 and 24 and um, give yourself a, a moment to do that and then let's come on back and I'll show you how to do it. Go ahead. Number 23, log base 7 of x minus log base 7 of x minus 2 equals 1. Now remember that um, a lot of this basically depends on your ability to look at the structure of the equation and find out what's really going on. We have a log base 7 there, log base 7 there, and that's good. We want to make sure we have the same log base there. And we have this expression minus this expression. All right, because of the properties we've talked about, that becomes a quotient. Here's what it looks like. So now we have log base 7 of this divided by that. Okay, it becomes a fraction, an algebraic fraction. Now we don't need the parentheses around x minus 2, and we'll just kind of group them this way to remember that's all one expression. And that equals 1. Now from here, the trick is to write it as an exponential function. So 7 is the base, and the 1, of course, over here is the exponent. Logarithm is always the exponent. And then we have equals x over x minus 2. All right. Well, we know that 7 to the first is 7, of course, so we can kind of ignore that for now. And the best thing to do now is multiply both sides by x minus 2 because that will get rid of the denominator right there. Go ahead and switch left and right sides so that it looks a little more familiar here. Let's have the x on this side. At least that's just my preference. And then I have 7 times x minus 2. That's the distributive property, right? So that's going to give me 7x minus 14. Subtract 7x from each side. So we have negative 6x equals negative 14. We want x by itself, so we're going to divide each side by the negative and the 6. Okay, don't forget the negative sign there. So x equals 14 over 6, both are positive. And of course, we can factor out a uh, factor of 2, or cancel out a factor of 2 to give my final answer of 7 over 3. Now you'll have to check with your teacher and your your class, your textbook to see if you need to be in decimal form or fraction form even uh, mixed number form there. But that's the idea. So we take the expanded logarithmic equation we try to condense it or compress it by using the property here. In this case it's the quotient property and then we write it exponentially. That's kind of the key there then it becomes basically an equation that we have to solve and there we go. Alright, let's look over at number 24. So we have log base 4 of this expression minus log base 4 of this expression which is just a 2 and because of the subtraction we know that's going to be another quotient. It becomes log base 4 of 2x squared over 2. Those 2's are going to cancel out, aren't they? So really, we now have log base 4 of 
x squared equals 1. Now we could take that 2 exponent and put it in front, and that's the exponent property here of logarithms, but let's go ahead and just think of this as our expression there, keep it that way, and now let's write it exponentially. So there's your base, 4, there's your exponent, 1, equals x squared. So x squared equals 4, and we know that the square root of 4, right, we're going to have to take the square root of each side, will give us a positive and a negative 2. Okay, don't forget the negative root there. All right. Now, this is the final video of all the problem sets and um, the teaching that I've done on this concept about logarithmic equations. Now you're going to have two self-quizzes. Okay, we're going to split it up into two parts. And we're going to go over this whole list we've been talking about. So before you get to the self-quiz in the next video, um, if you have missed any of these lessons here, I do urge you to go back and uh, check my playlist there, see if you can kind of fill in some gaps. And if you uh, need some personal attention, one-on-one -on -one live sessions with me, give me a call. All right, thanks for watching this video. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.